Hello there, Paul Tranny here, and I just showed Photoshop on my iPad. I was working on the same file. It is a cloud doc, so it's automatically in Photoshop on my desktop. In fact, I can go to File Open, and I can preview my cloud documents right in here. I can see all these various files. There it is, just like on my iPad, which is right here. Okay, so no worries about transferring it or anything like that. It's just automatically there, and I can get to work on it. And uh, in fact, I might want to open up some other files. As I take a look at uh, a number of these, I'll just kind of jump into this file as well. By the way, these are my cloud documents showing you this as well. Cloud documents, there it is, the same file. So a client can actually review this, whoever I want. They could say, this looks great. Make it part of the campaign, whatever, right? You have a paper trail for that, more or less, and then we can get to working on it on the, as part of this campaign. So this is what I have. Here's my file. Uh, I could see this uh, file over here uh, and all these fun fish and all these sorts of things. Um, I might want to make this a little less. Let's kind of move these in as well. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to actually just make this a smart object, right? So I'll select all these and I'll just go ahead and convert to smart object, right? And uh, I will just bring this over into this layout, right? Because that's what I'm going to make it part of this campaign, right? Let's take a look at it. There it is. Um, and here it is. I'm kind of pos positioning this kind of where I want it. Uh, I want to put it inside of this circle. So here I'm going to just create a clipping mask really fast. Boom, done. Okay, we see that, that looks nice. But now what I wanna do is I wanna kinda bust this turtle out of this circle. Wouldn't that be cool if it's breaking the border? So what do I have to do? That gets to be really difficult because this is a smart object. Well, what you can do in the latest version of Photoshop, you can just right click and you know what, you can convert it back to layers, okay? So here it is, just called layer one, converting it back to layers, let's watch it. There it is, layer one smart object group, just like that. And then I can play with this all I want. In this case, just uh, going in with this particular circle and clipping that background, for instance. And that's the result I want. Fantastic, let's move on. I got so much more to show you. Uh, let me show you some cool things, actually. I got uh, this, this square. I kind of want to do the same thing here. Let me show you. Because essentially what I was doing is I just needed to select that turtle. I did that on my iPad earlier, but check this out. I absolutely love this. Going down, it's actually this tool right here. First class citizen, brand new to um, the toolbar. Object selection tool, right? Because that's what I want to do. I want to select an object. What if I want to select this bird? Just draw a box around it. Let's see what happens, right? It selects that object, right? It can select that bird. I can select more of it. I could actually come over here and select this bird because all I really want to do is have that wing kind of busting out of the frame. So look, I've selected that. It was a bigger box, so it selects some of that. But how easy is that? 80% there and uh, we are ready to go. So if I take a look right over here at my layers, I'll typically do a command. Let's just duplicate this layer, boom and clip this first one, boom. And for this layer that uh, has the selection, I'll turn that into a mask. And there we have the results that I'm looking for. So I love the object selection tool. Guess what? It gets even easier than that. I think this is super fun because on this other side, I have this triangle, right? I have this, these nice little foxes, right? That I wanna do the same thing, right? I wanna clip them in there like that, but I want them kind of busting out on this layer, right? Could I do that and go through the process of making the mask? Sure. Or I can show you the properties panel and everything it has to offer. As I have that layer selected, it's a pixel-based layer. I can see that content right over here. And what do I want to do? I just want to remove the background, right? Clicking right there. No hands required. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Love it. Right, and by the way, what did it make? It made exactly what I wanted it to make, a um, layer mask on that layer. So that's fantastic. I clean that up all I want, but I'd say that look is looking pretty good. Um, I wanna talk more about the properties panel because it gets even more fun when it comes to text. So I'll select this text layer, right? And I can hit Alt, 
And then if you click on the layer, it'll jump right to that object. Boom, there we are. Boom, boom, protect, oops, sorry. I made a mask. Uh, nature, protect, preserve. Easy enough, going back to this first one. And look, like I was just mentioning, my layers, my properties panel is a first class citizen. You can see this is an Arial, excuse me, Acumen variable concept font. I can change the weight of it. Let's just kind of zoom out a little bit so you can see this. But I don't have to worry about jumping to the different type, type options in different panels or anything like that. Everything is in my properties panel. So that's what I want to do. I want to make it all caps, done, right? Super easy. I can play with this all day long, right? Um, I might even want to do that with these two, right? Selecting both those layers, making everything all caps. There we go. That looks pretty good. Okay. Let's get into some more because I'm realizing, I'm sorry about that, that uh, I wanna kinda jazz up the background and I wanna show you what are now first class citizens as well. Swatches now reorganized, allowing you to categorize all these different colors. So again, let's just show you. Selecting that background right down here. Obviously, we know what's going to happen there. Pretty straightforward. What I think is fun is gradients being a first-class citizen. They're always tucked away, hidden, kind of hard to get to, and in, in like fill when you ever wanted to fill something. But now I can go into blues and pick a nice blue, drop it on. That looks pretty good. Do we want to go a little bit darker? What's going to work well for this design? Ooh, I like that looks great i love all these zillions and zillions of gradients of course you can make your own you can get into your own patterns as well as i take a look at these patterns i just encourage you to uh just enjoy all of these to be honest with you drop them on see what you get we have desert water stone just a zillion different things uh maybe i'll drop in some wood since it's talking about nature and see what works well and uh yeah maybe i'll go back to the gradients that one perfect okay uh showing you all that gradients patterns and not only that styles and shapes being a first class citizen as well and look at all these shapes yeah you could just say all of them just all of them <laughs> right so many trees but this is what i want to show you right now so um kind of show you the comparison typically this is what we've changed we know if we want to resize this pixel based object I can do Command T, right? And then I hold down, it would vary. If it was a uh, vector object, let's drop on a vector object. Oh, hold on. Let's change the color of this vector object as well to white. Actually, that actually looks really good. I like that in the background, right? Happy little accident, but that looks pretty good. But if I wanna change that color tree, I'll do a Command T. It, the behavior is consistent. So again, I don't have to hold down the shift key for a vector object, right? I can resize that down and I don't have to hold down the shift key. Same thing for this flower, command T. I don't have to sh hold down the shift key. If you want the other behavior, so it's not constrained, it's gonna be holding down the shift key. So that's all I'm showing you there. But I also wanna focus on uh, kind of my last thing that I'm going to have time for, to be honest with you. I have more. That's more in here. But I think this is really powerful as well. Uh, distorting this tree as well. So I'm going to go edit, transform, and I want to warp it. Okay. And typically you would just get a three by three grid, right? Well, things don't fit into neat little boxes like that. They can get to be pretty interesting like this tree. I can say, hey, for this tree draw a vertical line right there and then draw a horizontal line right there. This gives me more control as I start to play and bend this tree so it's not so lopsided on one side. But this is really powerful and it works great. Also for photos, you can do some subtle adjustments without having all these extraneous points, right? Uh, but I'd say that looks pretty good. Size it down a little bit more and I would say this project is ready to go. All right, so that's it. That is uh, Photoshop, the latest release. There's more concerning like um, content aware fill and stuff like that that I don't have time to get into, but hopefully you liked at least what I think are my uh, greatest hits for Photoshop on the desktop. Thanks so much for watching.